Good evening. Tonight I want to talk to us a little bit about who we are in God, bring our some things back to our remembrance and to who God is and who we are to God. So we're going to get into that. Willie, when you will, please put up Genesis 1 1. That's the beginning. And there we go. In the beginning, God prepared, formed, fashioned, and created the heavens and the earth. That's the God we serve. A God so powerful that he spoke this thing into existence. He created. Keep that in mind. He created it. Go to 1, 26 through 28, Willie. Genesis. Genesis 1, 26. God said, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make mankind in our image. That ought to send you a signal there. Wait a minute now. God made me in his image? That should get your attention. That should start making your mind wonder a little bit, whoa, wait. Am I that important to God? After our likeness, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the tame beast, and over all of the earth. How much of it? All. All. And over all the earth and over everything that creeps upon the earth. On to 27, will we? So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. 28. And then God did something. He blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. And subdue it, using all its vast resources in the service of God and man. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves upon the earth. That's a pretty good resume. The God we serve, not only did he create this universe, he created me. And he did something with man that he didn't do with anything else. He gave us authority. He gave us an assignment. Be fruitful. Multiply. Subdue this earth I've given to you. That's powerful. This God thinks so much of me that he said, hey, I'm going to make you and then I'm going to give this to you. And it's under your authority. See, God's plan originally was perfect, awesome. I'm creating you. I'm making you in my image. I'm giving you all this to have authority over it. Be fruitful and multiply. Have a good time. Enjoy yourself, God said. Basically, it's all yours. All yours. But then we know the trip up came. And we fouled it up. So, where we were given dominion over the earth, remember who has power over the earth right now? Satan. Because of the fall. So what was designed for us, and what was given to us to have authority over, we lost that right. But we didn't lose the right to still be called his created. Who he loves and cares for. I was sharing this, you know, I think on, I can't remember if it was Sunday or whatever, but an inventor who creates something, he's passionate about it. He can tell you everything about that invention. Forwards and backwards. 
God loves us so much, he can tell us everything about us. He knows everything. There's nothing you can hide. Remember in the garden, they tried to hide. <laughs> what are you hiding from? Why are you hiding? We can't hide from him. In our mind, we are, but there's no hiding from God. You can't hide from the God that created you. Cannot do it. So, here's God. He's got these animals he made, this universe, the vast universe that he created. But yet, there's only one creation that has captured his heart. And that's us. The one he created in his own image. To have a relationship with. A fellowship with. You know, just as our spirit yearns for things, God has that spirit. See, we always think of what we yearn for. But God's spirit yearns for us. I'm looking for y'all. I'm, I want to talk to you. I want to spend time with you. I want to fellowship with you. I want you to tell me the things that, that, that are in your life. And I want to tell you some things back. That's how important we are to God. So as this, this current lifespan we're in, and this day and time and culture, God's so far away from the concerns of this world that I think many people have forgot his purpose for us. And again, we talked about that Sunday. We were created for his good pleasure. You don't create something for your pleasure not to enjoy it. Well, I made this thing and I, I, I wanted it for my pleasure, but I put it in the closet. No, no. We put ourselves in the closet and, and hide and, and fall away and think God doesn't care for us. We are the ones running and trying to figure out what is this about? Why am I here? But we know it now. We, we've seen it in the scripture about why we're here. We're here for God's good pleasure. Well, if you will, put on Matthew 121. It's warm in here? Warm? Now here's the uh, angel of the Lord saying to Mar to, about Mary. She will bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus. The Greek form of the Hebrew Joshua, which means Savior. For he will save his people from their sins. That is, prevent them from failing and missing the true end and scope of life, which is God. So now God said, I, ooh, I've missed my people. I've got to do something about this. I've, I've, let, I've lost the fellowship of my creation. So then God does what? God humbled himself. <laughs> the God of this world, this created universe, humbled himself to say, I'm going to go do something about this, this rift between me and my family. This tear, this wall that's up there, this misconception in their life that I'm not anything to them, or they're not good enough to be involved with me. So he sent a Savior. Matthew 27, Willie, verse 50. We know where he is now. And Jesus cried again and with a loud voice and gave up his spirit. On to 51. And at once the curtain of the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. 
Jesus said, I'm going to listen. I'm going to tear it in the middle. So then they can walk directly into the throne room of God. See, man, man was kept away during that period. But now, I'm coming to save them. And in doing saving them, I'm giving them a direct path to the Father. A direct path to the Father. The veil was rent. Boom. Done. How important are we to him? How important are we that he humbled himself to redeem us to him, to make us friendly to him again? He, he doesn't do it for the angels. He doesn't do it for the cows. He doesn't do it for the stars. He does it for us. Us. There's only one creation that his heart pines for. That's us. That's how important we are to him. So again, as you're walking through this life and the doldrums get you, and you're in your valley, and it's tough in the valley, there's no sun in the valley, you're drenched in the valley, you're weak in the valley, know that there's a God that cares for you so much that he created you, he calls you his own, he humbled himself to save you, to make himself friendly to you again. And there's many more plans involved still with what he wants to do for us. Revelation 21, Willie. Start with verse 1. I get excited in Revelation now. See, that's, uh, that's the end of it which is really the beginning of it. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> then I saw a new sky, heaven, and a new earth. For the former sky and the former earth had passed away, vanished, and there was no longer existed any sea. Verse 2. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, all arrayed like a bride, beautified and adorned for her husband. 3. Then I heard a mighty voice from the throne, and I perceived its distinct words saying, See, the abode of God is with men. Who is it with? Men. Nothing else of his creation. Men. Men. And he will live in camp tent among them. Wait a minute now. See, everyone thinks of God way up here, and we're always down here looking. I'd touch a God if I could, but see, I can't. That's the lie we've all bit. I'd, I'd hold your hand, God, but see, you're way up here, and I'm, I'm, I'm just lowly. Don't ever let someone say you're lowly. You're his created being. You are not lowly. He will live with them, and they shall be his people. Not just his group over there his people and God shall personally be with them and be their God personally be with them be with us not only is he our great God but it sounds like he is our best friend living in with me dwelling with me Next verse, Willie. I love this part. Remember the valleys? Ain't no more valleys here. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be anguish, sorrow, and mourning, nor grief, nor pain anymore. For the old conditions and the former order of things have passed away. And if you ain't got nothing to look for in your life, you are missing that scripture right there. That is glory to me. I can't wait for that. Next verse, Willie. 
And he who was seated on the throne said, See, I make all things new. Remember I said the restoration? Restoration? He makes all things new. Believe on your restoration. Restoration's coming. Believe on it. Also, he said, record this, for these sayings are faithful, accurate, incorruptible, and trustworthy, and true. He's called faithful and true. And they are faithful and true. And he further said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I myself will give water without price from the fountain of the water of life. Next one, Willie. He who is victorious shall inherit all these things. And I will be God to him, and he shall be my son. If you don't think you have a great inheritance coming as a Christian, you're wrong. There's no riches greater than what that says. He who is victorious, just stop back there, Willie, go back to that. Again, he who is victorious shall inherit all these things, and I will be God to him, and he shall be my son. Do you think he wants a relationship? It's all through here who you are to him. But again, religious, the religious system has put him too far out of your reach. Religious doctrines have got it in our way of who he really is to us and who we are to him. Every one of us here is a minister. If you're a Christian, you're a minister. You don't have to be appointed a minister. If if you believe the gospel, you have a duty to spread it. You have been grafted into his ministry. That's how important you are. So why are we down on ourselves? Why don't we understand this? Because, see, we're still... In our human element, this sin nature element. We haven't been given our glorified bodies yet that won't have any of that junk in us. See, all that junk will be washed away. I will make all things new. But while we're here, we have to do the best with what we have. We have to do the best with what we have. We have to realize, God, you created me. For a purpose. And that purpose is to bring you pleasure. Lord, show me how to bring you pleasure. Guide me how to bring you pleasure. Walk with me. Tell me how to bring you pleasure. And if you really sell out to that, I like what Pastor Bob says, it won't be too hard anymore. You'll just do it. You'll just do it. It won't be strife. You'll just do it. When I think of God... You know, we all, you know, here's the image. There's this huge God out there. And he's just somewhere in the universe. And I'm just this little thing here. But I think God sees us the other way. God's here and he sees this big old Charles. He just sees us. He says, look at him. There's my son. I'm proud of my son. I want to talk to my son. If you don't think God thinks you're big, then now that's a lie. And if you believe the scriptures, even though we don't understand them all, you have to accept them as faith. You have to believe in his word and believe what he says about us. Believe that he, he, he's not a God to create all these things to turn around and say it's a lie. You know, I was talking with a buddy of mine the other day, and he's, an, he's a professed atheist, but he's my friend. Well, how can that be? He's a Christian. He's not. How can he be a friend? That's the religious system, remember? The guy's got integrity. He's a nice man. Do anything for me. He's just set on what he believes in, and I'm set on what I believe in. The difference is, 
he's still confused about what he believes in. <laughs> and I'm not. <laughs> he's still studying book after book after book to find the answer. And I've got one book, and it's got the answers. And I just share that with him every time we talk. What's your latest book you want me to read? Okay, well here, try this. This is the same one <laughs> that I ask you to read every time. But I'll look at that other book for you. But I have no grief toward him. Remember, our fight is against principalities and powers. It's not against that man. It's not even against that doctrine. Because the doctrine doesn't mean anything to me. Christianity means something to me. But what means something to me is the fight and the struggle I know they're under from powers and principalities. The confusion that is set forth in their mind. They're, they're, they're not doing what... Listen, I make all things new. The renew, renew your mind when? Daily. 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 See, they want to get a precise, exact answer about everything in here. And it's not possible. He tells us. No. <laughs> Some things I will keep a mystery to you. Because, see, he still has to let us know that he is God, by the way. He's not someone we can figure out and get it all down and say, Well, I said, I found out who he is. I know exactly what he is all about. I can tell you what he'll do today. No, no, it's the other way. I know who you are because I'm God and I can tell you what you're going to be doing. It's, it's that, that's the only way it is. That's the, what I, we, we don't need to be concerned with all the questions. Sure, we have questions, but you know what? The, learn, the sooner you learn to forget about those questions and just serve him and love him and trust him and realize you made me for your good pleasure. Let me just enjoy that. Let me soak in that for a while. And life is tough down here. But again, it wasn't designed like that. See, people go, if God is God and he loves you, why does he let all this stuff happen? Let me go all the way back to Genesis and explain to you. It purpose wasn't that man created that fall. See, man, see, people want to blame Satan. I don't blame Satan in that. Satan just, he threw the, he threw the hook out there. You're going to bite the hook. You're going to get hungry and bite the hook. I know you're going to bite the hook. Watch you, you're going to bite the hook. Man's, man's sin bit the hook. So then that peace that God initially set up, the, the authority, the, the, listen, when he created it, you'd walk up to a lion and pet the lion. But you know what? That's coming back again. That's coming back again. He loves us so much that he's sending a restoration for us. He redeemed us. And again, the world gets confused. That's not automatic. There's always his part and our part. We have to learn, exercise our will in accepting. Christ, I accept you for what you've done for me. I believe you were here on this planet Earth and walked around in this human body and sacrificed yourself. Those soldiers didn't kill him. He gave himself up for us. See, man even wants to get the credit of killing Jesus, and it ain't there. He gave himself up freely. Why? In other words, he sent a letter out of his heart saying, I miss you. I'm looking for you. I've, I lost you and I, I want to find you again. You mean something to me. Don't you know I created you? I want you back in my life. Isn't that sad that we get out of his life? You know, it's like when you hear a saucy teenager tell their parent, leave me alone, get out of my face. They're confused at that point, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> they don't know you're trying to keep them in a certain path. And that's what we do from time to time. Get out of my face. 
Don't tell him to get out your face anymore. You're not going to lead a perfect life, so don't get down on yourself when you don't walk straight 24-7. But he don't leave you when you walk, don't walk straight. He never goes away. We run. Remember that. Remember that. The God of this world doesn't do anything to make you leave him. That's the blame game. That's the Satan made me do it mentality. Yeah, Satan has his, his tricks, his darts. But again, you have to be willing to let it penetrate you. And if you don't have that full armor of God on, you will get penetrated. Renew your mind daily. Put on your armament daily. Be ready for battle daily. See, God's got a protection in our lives, but again, there's his part and our part. We just can't lay down every day and say, well, God, I know you protect me, so I'm just going to lay here. Well, you know, there's a Mack truck running down the street, right? Yeah, well, God isn't. No, 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 no. You have to do your part. To me, he's done more than we deserve. <laughs> but I know he does it because he loves us. How many parents do things for the kids, not because they really deserve it? And sometimes it shouldn't be done. But the love compels, compels. The love he had for us compelled him to move. Isn't it when you think about the dynamic of it, think about it. The love he had for you and you and you and you compelled him, compelled the God of this universe to act on our behalf. Awesome. Awesome that that happened. And it's still happening. And it will happen forevermore because, again, he's going to what? He's going to dwell among them. And who's them? Us, the Christians. I'm looking forward to that day. I'm glad he thinks I'm important. No, he don't think it. I'm glad he knows I'm important. I'm glad that I know that I'm important to him. See, until you get that in your spirit and your mind, that you know that you know that you know that you know that you're important to him, you're going to stay in the valley. I don't care what mountains you have in your life, you're always going to go back down to the valley. He didn't tear that veil for you to stay on the other side. Come on in. Come on in. It's a free pass. Come in. Be with me. A great God he is. A great God. Not to keep us in the mud, but to put us on that potter's wheel. <laughs> Hang in there, son. Hang in there. We get in there. And he yields us if you're willing. He's not going to go against your will. So as we going through this, this again, this is a, this is a strange time. <laughs> It's getting stranger by the day. The devil wants to make you think that everyone's falling away. And they are falling. But he wants to make you think everyone's falling away. This whole thing is breaking down. But keep in mind, that's the religious system. We're not in the religious system. We're in the army of God. We're in the Christian army. We're sold out to what his word says. And there's no denomination in his word. He says, here's one thing you need to do. You need to accept my son, Jesus Christ, as your savior. And if you do that, you're going to live eternally with me. Death will have no sting over you. That's his doctrine. That's his creation. Us. Tell that to the evolutionists who thinks we're equal with fish, or we come from a fish. You know, <laughs> no, 
No, I've never seen God looking out for a whale to say, well, come talk to me tonight. I want to see you for dinner and talk to you and bring your cousins, some dolphins. No, he's looking for you, Elizabeth. He's looking for you, Elisa. He's looking for you, Frank, Willie, Mike. That's who he's looking for. That's who he wants. That's who he's got out there. So keep that in mind. So how important are we? We're really important. Not to think higher of ourselves, but to know. Man, let me boldly tell you who I am. <laughs> I was created by God of this universe. The God of this universe. I have been given authority and power. A sound mind. I've been given rights to the kingdom. Now, religious systems will say you have no rights to the kingdom. You know, different, different sects of religions will try to keep you. No, no. If you're a co-heir, everything belonging to Jesus belongs to you. Every right he has is your right. Every power he has is your power. And Satan knows that. That's why he continues to lie and try to confuse man and get him off track. He knows if he can get him off track just a little bit. A year from later, then, it'd be a little bit more. Five years, a little bit more. And remember, it's just not that one man. No man is an island to themselves. It's that man's spouse, his kids, his friends. Get it? That's why when you become concrete in this word, you proclaim it to yourself, to God, to your family. I have planted my feet firmly on this word, and I will not be shaken off of it. The circumstances in my life will not sway me. My family's position will not sway me. What that church or this church or that cult says will not sway me. I am on board, and I am not moving. God is waiting for that kind of a relationship. See, he, he won't, listen, if, if you're building a, an army, you want some basic train to go on, you want some proof to go on, he's looking for some people that are willing to stand there in the gap, in the fight, and he will send his army forth. People aren't going to get, listen, people aren't going to just freely walk in anymore. You got to go out and get in some people's faces and tell them about this God. And, and, and give your testimony, personal testimony to them. That's what's going to affect people is your personal testimony. I can't give them your testimony. You can't give them my testimony. But if you get in their face and they want to share, you give them your personal testimony. You tell them why God's important to you. You tell him what he's done for you. You tell him what he means to you. You tell him why you love him. Tell him why he loves you. And when they do the old favorite thing of, well, if God who loves you does this stuff in the world, lets this happen. God don't let that happen. Man let that happen. Any bad devices of this world is from Satan, and men took the bait. But then you give them the truth. There's good redemption coming in that regard. And every Christian will be given a glorified body and an eternity to spend with the Father. And there won't be no more tears, no more anguish, no more sorrow, no more suffering. You won't have to go hide and say, I'm naked. You'll be up there, front and center, worshiping the God who created you. Carrying out His assignment that He has in your life. Boldly. So don't wait to just be bold then. Be bold now. There's no shame in being a Christian. The world's trying to put a shame tablet on you. Don't bite that. Let them know who you are. God didn't create you to hide. He created you to tell the people, I love my God. And when I love my God, it gives Him great pleasure. 
great pleasure. So just keep that in mind. And again, I know high mountains and low valleys. But stay steady. Stay focused. Take your own personal life and throw the past away. Ain't nothing you can do about the past. But you can do something about right now and the future. I can walk with God right now and in the future. And God, I thank you for the restoration that you're going to give me for the things in the past that I didn't get right. I know a restoration is coming, and I thank you for that, God. Thank you for the restoration. And believe in it. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. We're going to spend eternity with our God. Eternity. And it won't be no more this, well, he's way up there and I'm way down here. It's going to be, <laughs> he, he's right here. He's right here. He's right here. I will dwell among them. See, his spirit's with us right now, but God himself will dwell among us. That's what the scripture says. I'm looking forward to that. You think those streets of gold are going to be pretty. Just wait till God's dwelling with you. That's awesome. Awesome. Waiting for it. You're important. You're not the worm in the cabbage patch. You're a gem to him. Perfectly created image of the God of this universe. That's the scripture. It's the truth. It is a fact. And it is a fact. As a Christian, you're going to be given a restored body that doesn't carry that pain anymore. That serves a God openly and willingly. So serve him willingly now. Build up some rewards for yourself in heaven. Be excited about getting them. Because <laughs> they're coming. I just think that we have a God that we can talk to. That we can get on our knees and cry for. Could you imagine your existence with nothing to look forward to? It wouldn't be good. But we have a glory to look forward to. And I'm looking forward to it. So again, remember you are important to him. Anything that an inventor creates is important. You are important to him. Remember that. Thank you.